In the past few years, we have seen a surge of interest for the topic of server-side rendering with the rise of frameworks like Next.js and the push of framework like Angular to support server-side rendering. But if you rewind the clock 20 years ago, we realized that server-side rendering was actually the way many websites were rendered during the rise of the internet in the early 2000s. So it raised multiple questions. First, what is actually server-side rendering? Why did we move away from that? And why are we going back? Hi, my name is Kevin. I make video on tech behind products and software engineering. So like the video and subscribe for more. Let's start by explaining what server-side rendering actually is. Well, it's the process of rendering web pages directly on the server, reducing the workload of the client. Let's take this server-side render app as an example. The content here is sent to the client, and the browser renders the page for each click. Another example is the e-commerce website ST. When we click on each section, the content is rendered by the server and sent to the client. The obvious benefit of this process is speed. Applications are rendered fast, and for users with slow internet, the loading of web pages is more efficient. Now that we understand what server-side rendering is, it's easy to get why it was so popular. In fact, most of the websites available back then were static websites, and the internet was very slow in today's standard. So rendering all the HTML on the server just made sense. On top of that, server-side rendering technology like ASP.NET or PHP were very powerful, well-designed, and met the needs of most developers. But with the web growing in popularity, the need for more powerful web applications with dynamic content increased and the internet started to become more and more personalized to deliver better user experiences. Then it started to make more sense to sacrifice loading speed and other benefits of server-side rendering for more interactive modern web applications. To achieve that, the content of each page needed to be custom to a user and it became more difficult to just render static web pages on the server, so some computation needed to shift to the client. Then jQuery was introduced in 2006 as a fantastic tool to manipulate and traverse the DOM. Suddenly, using JavaScript to interact with HTML became easier, and jQuery also introduced browser normalization, making all browsers behave the same way with the same jQuery code. That was the tipping point of client-side rendering, and soon enough with the evolution of client-side library like Backbone, Angular, and React. Client-side rendering became easier and more powerful, so it made less and less sense to render content in the server. But to understand some of the real benefits of client-side rendering, let's take Twitter as an example. It's possible to navigate between pages without refreshing the browser, enjoy rich and animated interaction, and the benefits of lazy loading while scrolling. All of this is either not possible or very difficult to achieve with server-side rendering. But if client-side rendering is so good, why are we going back to server-side rendering? Well, the world has evolved from static web generation to server-side rendering and now client-side rendering. Every era of the web has its advantages and drawbacks. We need to keep in mind that not everything on the web needs to be an application with great interactive content. In some cases, like a personal blog, user interactivity is not required, but being visible to search engine is a big deal. For an e-commerce website like eBay, server-side rendering makes sense because having the content already rendered when the page loads helps with SEO. Okay, so we understand why server-side rendering is back, and that is not meant to replace client-side rendering. But what about combining the advantage of all era of the web in a simple and easy-to-use framework? Well, that's already been done through Next.js. Let me know in the comment if you want some content about Next.js or any other topic you would like me to cover. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this, and see you in the next one.